Washington, D.C., the District of Communism. Yes. <laughs> And a lot of people call you Marjorie Trader Green, the queen of fascism. But go on. The problem with Washington, D.C. is it's so disconnected from real America and real Americans. Um, I think they're so disconnected. I don't know if we can get them right back on track. But actually, I don't want them right back on track. I want to impeach many of them. Yes, <laughs> please. Firing squad. Firing squad. Yes, the Green supporter responded to her call for impeaching Democrats with firing squad. Sheesh. It did not look like the congresswoman heard that, but if she did, would Green have condemned it? Probably not, because this far-right lunatic traffics in hate and embraces violent imagery. Consider another recent Marjorie Taylor Green speech. She spoke of Donald Trump having an enemies list. There's nobody else other than President Trump that has a list, and he has a list of the people that need to be cleaned out and they need to be fired and some of them need to be prosecuted in Washington, D.C. Cleaned out, fired, prosecuted. And when you convict somebody of treason, as a lot of conservatives like to point out, the punishment is execution. Thus, the easy manner in which Green supporters and others on the far right talk about firing squads. We've seen this repeatedly the past few years. Remember January the 6th when Vice President Mike Pence supported the certification of Joe Biden's election victory over Donald Trump? I'm telling you, if Pence came, we're going to drag <laughs> through the streets. You <laughs> politicians are going to get <laughs> drugged through the streets. Mm. Well, back then, some of us thought that these were just a bunch of fringe extremists and that the talk of hanging anybody was just a figure of speech. But we've seen repeatedly, thanks to Marjorie Taylor Greene and others, that this idea of literally removing your political opponents and perhaps even killing them is no joke. This talk is deadly serious and it's being repeated out loud among people in the far right who cheer on their far right leaders. This is frightening stuff even when it comes from imbeciles. Historians say it smacks of fascism, and it has already normalized the idea that debating your opponents is for losers, and that actually canceling people you disagree with is now the way to go. We've seen that in Montana with transgender lawmaker Zoe Zephyr. The Republican legislature recently blocked her from entering or speaking in the House chamber. A week earlier, Zephyr had spoken out against GOP efforts to restrict gender-affirming care. We saw a similar expulsion of black Democratic lawmakers in Tennessee who had spoken out and joined demonstrators in calling for new efforts to combat gun violence. Instead of a vigorous debate, Republicans have decided to simply eliminate debates. Here's Connecticut Democratic Senator Chris Murphy. This is a trend all across the country. This is a really, really disturbing trend, right? This is how you lose a democracy is when people that disagree with their opponents instead of engaging in that debate cancel their right to be part of the debate in the first place. Mm, this is an issue we need to talk about. America's standards of political decorum are failing. Our political discourse is becoming more hateful and more violent and more exclusionary. And if we stay silent or let it go, Marjorie Taylor Greene and her firing squad seeking supporters will only gain more power and credibility. What really concerns me is they don't even seem concerned about winning the 2024 election. They just keep carrying on with their horrific policies and they never change course. That's Marjorie Taylor Greene complaining about the Democrats and their policies. I guess she was upset about the American Rescue Plan Act that extended COVID benefits, got people out of uh, COVID. Maybe she was upset about the infrastructure bill that Biden passed. Maybe she was upset about the Marriage Equality Act that Biden passed. But if Marge wants to go there, let's go there. Out of here. And I will restore my travel ban to keep radical Islamic terrorists out of our country. You saw what happened four years, four years we went, four years. You saw that, right? We were very tough on that. We don't want our buildings blown up. We don't want to have problems. That's Marge's guy saying that if he wins, He's going to bring back the Muslim ban. Remember the Muslim ban? That's the one where it banned a bunch of countries that had never committed an act of terror in America from coming to America. Uh, by the way, the biggest threat to Americans are Americans. But Trump has more policies that he could bring back that Mars probably likes, like this one. 
This wall can't be climbed. This is very, very hard. Plus, it's designed to absorb heat, so it's extremely hot. The wall is, uh, you won't be able to touch it. You can, you can uh, fry an egg on that wall. So it's a very, very hard thing to climb. Yes, the wall that he never built that doesn't work because if criminals want to come across, they can just dig under the wall. Or in that video, I don't even know if it's real, but it looks real. There's a guy climbing the wall. I mean, it's hilarious. But his policies were real bad. They were bad. But here's some policies he'd like to implement if he actually wins. It gets worse. Check this out. We'll get something done where everyone is going to be very satisfied. I believe that. On the national level or national level? I think we'll get it done in, on some level. It, it could be on different levels, but we're going to get it done. I know the issue very well. I think I know the issue better than most, and we will get that taken care of. There you have it. They want to ban abortion. So that's a great, that's a winning policy for America in 2024. How are these guys going to learn? Will they ever learn? They're not going to learn. Their policies are horrible. All right. You want to ban abortion. You want to make gay marriage illegal. You want to isolate people that are not part of your majority. Right. His policies were horrible. Even some of the policies that he tried to blame Biden for. How about the fact that he negotiated with the Taliban to release the prisoners that were Taliban prisoners and he negotiated the exit, even though Biden had to do the exit? Trump's administration actually negotiated that exit. How about the idea that uh, he was for pausing the Constitution because he thought that he had won, or at least that's what he says. How about all the other horrible ideas that they have? How about the lack of any kind of gun legislation? How about the fact that they want to take away the ability for people's votes to actually count? How about all that stuff, Marge? Talk about some bad policies. So who knows? Will they have a chance to win? I don't think so. The primary for the Republicans is going to get a little messy because you got Ron the dumbness going against Donald Trump. Ron hasn't quite actually announced his presidency yet, but they're going to go after each other and Trump's going to say crazier and crazier stuff. But then when they go to the general election, how are they going to win? How do you win when you're trying to ban abortion, take a woman's right to choose. How are you going to win when you guys are, are doing these policies that benefit just your uh, 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 constituencies and make them feel like you're doing something when you're really not doing anything, all right? Building a wall ain't going to do nothing. Muslim ban ain't going to do nothing. How about working on some gun legislation to stop kids from getting shot at schools? How about that? ain't going to happen. How about an actual democracy where everyone's votes counts? How about instead of trying to redline and take away people's votes, you guys actually allow people's votes to count? How about instead of trying to limit the way people vote, you help increase the way that people vote? How about that? Ain't going to happen. So in the general election, they're screwed. So we shall see what happens. And for Marge to say, that the Democrats' policies ain't doing nothing. Next time you're passing over a road or a bridge uh, that actually has been fixed, remember, it was Joe Biden's administration that did it with the infrastructure bill. So take that to the bank, Marge. Take that to the bank.